doing everybody man it's a cold Saturday morning holy cow I'm gonna go inside where it's warmer gotta work on that today by myself I'm gonna try to get some painting and cleaning done for Nathaniel today before he comes back so I better get started <laughs> oh, it didn't work. When he's not here all the time, you have to do what you can to get the car ready for him when he's here. So that when he comes up next weekend, hopefully we can get a front suspension installed. It's not easy not having him here all the time. the extra steps to get things ready for him. It means that sometimes dad's out here by himself getting stuff ready. So by the time he gets here on a weekend, we're ready to put in the big stuff. And before you know it, the weekend's over and he's back over to his mom. So, so this is what I do in the meantime. So it occurred to me that we've talked a lot about Nathaniel's car and my car, and we never really talked about what power plants we were planning to put in them. So I figured uh, I would feature that maybe for this episode and show you what, uh, what we plan. That right there is the old small block that used to be in my car. Oh, that small block I built 30 years ago, it was a good running car. It's a 72 uh, truck block, four bolt main, 350, board 30 over, forged TRW pistons, forged crank, Sanderson CC13 uh, jet hot coated uh, headers, upgraded to an eight inch uh, balancer. It used to have a performer intake on it. Uh, it's got a performer RPM intake on it right now, but to be honest, hook clearance is such an issue for these cars that I'm not sure that that extra half inch uh, is going to fit so we may have to go back to a, a lower profile intake and if you happen to notice right there is my ls that is going to be uh that's the one that's going to be in my car it's uh it's 98 ls1 out of a camaro it's the first year of the ls is actually for the camaro um so it's still a uh, mechanical throttle body it's not uh, drive by wire which I kind of like. A uh, little down on horsepower compared to most. It's not an LS3, it's not an LS6, not an LS7, nothing fancy like that. Um, last I checked, I think they're only rated, I, I can't remember if it was either 305 or 320. Um, pretty modest on horsepower, but that's fine. It's fuel injected, it gets good gas mileage, it's got plenty of horsepower. I'm gonna throw it in there and uh, just get it running first, and then obviously I'm gonna start throwing some parts at it and upgrade that baby. So anyway, there you go. The hearts of the beasts. Leaving to get Nathaniel. Wow, the water's gone down the creek. Try not to run off the road. <laughs> hey, look who's here tonight. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hey.
detail. Well, it's Friday night, and I'm back out here in the garage. Nathaniel's here this evening, but uh, his older brother is actually uh, home from college at the moment, and they're uh, enjoying some time together, and I don't blame him. So I'm out here trying to get some things caught up while the two of them are inside playing some games. So he'll likely be out here later. But I'm going to get a few things uh, done, and uh, I'll probably see him in here in a little bit. Our goal this weekend is to try to get as much of this suspension put together as possible. But the main thing is, we've got these new polyurethane bushings that uh, we assembled, but when we went to the press and had the, uh, the old bushings taken out, I didn't use a spacer like I should have when I pressed the old ones out. What I've got sitting here is the uh, lower control arms from uh, my Monza that already have the new bushings pressed in. And then right here is Nathaniel's bushings with the bushings just kind of resting in there, um, just to give you a little contrast so you can kind of see. The gap in between there should be one and a half inches. And then when you come over here, you can see that we've crushed down almost an entire eighth of an inch. And uh, same thing here. Anyway, I've got to straighten that out before I take these uh, to get pressed in tomorrow. And uh, same thing with the other bushings. In addition to getting that front suspension done down there, I'm also going to try to get uh, this front sway bar painted right here. Sway bars off of Monza Spider actually had a much larger, uh, thicker sway bar. They were an inch and an eighth versus the uh, larger V8 ones, which were only an inch. So if you have a Monza Spider, one of the more desirable parts you can get off of them is this thicker one and an eighth inch sway bar that uh, it's kind of hard to find. So I've had a few of these laying around, and uh, this one we're going to get cleaned up and painted. I like my fancy paint booth. Ready for the black. I've had this piece of steel laying around the garage here. I'm gonna use that as a template to use in between the two areas of the control arm so that when it, it uh, presses that, well, that's a dead marker. 12 seconds later. I've got a couple bushings still to press out and also want to get the new ones pressed in. We can use this piece of steel here to put in between there to maintain that gap. like that. I want to give it a little bit of a round shape so that it fits inside the uh, control arm. And I don't have an anvil. I don't have metal shaping tools. But I've got this round bar right here. Kind of wedge this thing in here and, uh, and then shape it around this round bar a little bit at a time. That's actually light enough. Just enough to wrap it around and use that as a spacer. Well, I did a little bending and metal shaping on uh, the gaps in between the bushings here. As you can see, my little piece of steel fits in there perfectly now. So. Gotta head into town for parts. My wife's gonna go with me. Hi! <laughs> Call this our boneyard. You see all the stuff we kind of collect, and I don't know, boneyard sounds better than junkyard, I guess. <laughs> Here's what's left of an old car of mine. Yeah. I'm gonna try to find some good metal on this thing. Okay. As you can tell, there's not much left. Good metal, especially. Oh, 
we're hoping for the best, but unfortunately it's underneath this entire pile. Oh boy. All right. So this doesn't look too good. Go back and compare that to what we got. There might be some pieces of that we can use, but it's not looking too promising. That's one of the worst driver's floorboards I've ever seen. Yeah, it's this little hump right here. Right. Part of it's already rusted out, I think, so we just gotta do our best to find the same shape. There we go. Okay. Let me yeah. hold that while you try to draw around it. Uh okay, that'll be help. There we go. I'll move my hand when you get to the top part there. Okay. Whoa, you don't have to press so hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely see that paint line. Yeah. Go around that left side, then I'll move my hand here. Oops. There you go. All right, that gives me a decent idea of where to get that grinder out here and cut with. Okay. All right, that's the piece we're going to try to salvage off of this. Down to run it down. Yeah. Oh. Can't wait on that. See what down here. Oh my gosh, I thought I had my tetanus shot. Yeah. There it is. I cut it just slightly large. All right. We can trim it to fit, but that's not a bad piece. Same mill thickness, same shape. I don't have to make that, uh, that custom bin right there. Yeah. Get that tacked in. Mm-hmm. have to bend it and shape it a little bit, but we're still okay. Cool. <laughs> Let's see if we get in there. I'll have to trim that top this a little bit. We'll get this, get this piece cleaned up. Trim this top a little bit, grind the edges as well to get some clean metal. And what we'll do for now is just tack in a few spots around the sides mm -hmm. to hold it in place. Yeah. And then we'll do a little bending and shaping because there's a little bit of a bend right here. I notice that this is flat. Loosely, yeah, just where it just barely touches, and then it's tight enough. <laughs> you like the sound of power tools? Uh, you don't? No, I love them too. I cannot lie. talking about you. you. Go ahead and load up. Yeah. I'm gonna go over to Daryl's house to use his press to get these bushings and these control arms. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he's there. All right, spacer's in there. Get this old one out. You're okay. You're okay. Okay. Cool beans. Wow. You did it. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and give it a whirl. Okay. All right. All right. Try it again. Let's. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang, hang on. on. No, yep. Let up, let up. You're bending the whole thing around there. I need uh, this corner yeah. right here braced. It's bending it down. 
we'll get it out, but we'll have to straighten it back out after we get the new one in, I think. Yeah. I'm waiting for the big boom. Yeah, for yeah. the here in just a second. Yeah, it's getting close. One eternity later. Oop. Is something bending or? No, it's. It's coming out the bottom. It's. Yeah, it's coming out. It's maybe the bushing coming out, not the sleeve. Mm. I feel it's gonna be easier. Hey! Hey, hey it's hey. out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. You jumped a little bit. <laughs> it's the only one. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I did too. I'd admit it. <laughs> Pushing in back here. Mm. Yeah, the spacer go around a little, around the corner a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Bring it up. Yeah. Right. So with that bottom side of that flange, it was more fragile, but oh, yeah. kept crushing in there. Oh, there we go. Now it's punching through. Look at yeah. that. Hey, look at that. See, they just oh, don't make good. tools like this anymore. This one's big enough to press. Why are you doing this one? Mm -hmm. We'll bring this around. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of hole on it. Got it. Right, okay. You ready? Okay. Yep. It'll take some pull on it. There it goes. No more. <laughs> <laughs> but you're there. Your feet came off the ground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see this. Look yeah. at that. That came. Oh man, that worked like a charm. Wow. Look at that. Right there. That works yep. well. Good old Arbor Press. Come around, yeah. pull that up a little bit. Kind of stiff. Go. Good. Okay. All right.
or try to pry it up just to like a nice like hair. Hair? Just a hair. Just a little hair. Uh, a little more. A couple of hairs. Oh, there we go. Can I have that hammer real quick? I don't care. You bag it in. Woo! One side. Okay, a little one. Yeehaw! Just my day. What? You alright? Yeah. Good. Alright. That one may not uh, fight you as much. I didn't put it in that punch. <laughs> oh, so that what been a pretty good weekend here in spider garage we've uh, got quite a bit done not as much as I wanted to I wanted to get the entire front suspension on this thing this weekend and uh, I ran into a problem with the lower ball joints I didn't have a way to press it on the tool I was gonna rent to do that um, was already rented out and then I also found that on the other lower control arm that we had that the um, ball joint was bad there as well and no one likes to stock uh, parts for a 1980 Monza. And of the five stores that I went to, none of them had it. Now, they could get it within a day to two days, but to get that done for this weekend was just not going to work. So what we did get done uh, is we did manage to get the upper control arm on uh, both sides. And you can see inside there, that X shape there in the middle, that's actually called the K-frame. That's been missing on this thing for a while. We got that on because as we get this whole front suspension put together, then um, it needs to be stiff and sturdy and ready to set down on uh, all four tires. So when I get the ball joints fixed, um, we'll come back and we'll finish up uh, the rest of the front suspension with springs, um, rotors, spindles, the whole bit, and uh, we'll get it put together. As far as this patch on the floor goes, I don't know what's going on. I know I'm not a very good welder, but even I thought that it would go a little more smoothly than it did. Um, gonna have to air my dirty laundry here, but look how horrible this weld job turned out. Yeah, the gaps are too large. I also found out this metal right here was just too thin. I thought it looked like it was good metal and I started grinding down some of the rest and found out that uh, it's a little thin. So obviously I kept burning through right here. And then, yeah, that's just, I don't know, I got new gas for the welder and I uh, turned down the wire speed and I turned down the heat. Um, even though the floor is not, I mean, other than that one spot um, was normal thickness and so it shouldn't have burned through as easily as it did. So I don't know, some of you out there could probably give me some great tips. Uh, I'm using 7525 argon and oxygen. So I know some of you guys out there like to use 100% argon, but I've got a, a 7525 tank here on my welder and you can see the settings on my welder are turned down about as far as they go and it uh, didn't seem to help much. Well, I think that's it for this weekend. I think we're gonna call it a day. I've gotta get Nathaniel back to his mom's and uh, I gotta get Matthew 
back to uh, Purdue University. It's been a fun weekend with both the boys, and uh, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. We got a lot done. We were hoping to get uh, all four tires installed and get this thing off the jacks today, but that's all right. That's the way it goes. This is reality. You get done what you can uh, in the time that you got allotted, and uh, the next time Nathaniel's over, we'll get a little more done. In the meantime, I'll work on uh, picking up a new ball joint and uh, getting that tool and uh, getting it ready for him to install next time.